Maps.com. It's Thursday night and it's got to be 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 Mountain, 6 Central, and 7 Eastern because I am live on YouTube. And look what I have. I have a unicorn shooter that shoots rainbow balls out of its butt. Now, if you guys watched me last week, you would have seen uh, my Stampin' Besties bombarding me with these little things uh, at the beginning of the show. And um, it was pretty dang funny. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy some more. You know, I thought, gosh, is my family going to think they're funny? Well, my son had come down here one evening when they were here, and he thought having a war with these things was amazing. And then my husband also appreciated that. So I made a little trip to Amazon because we don't have stuff like this in my town because we have no people here and no stores. And I bought some. So I bought a pink rainbow shooting unicorn. I bought a llama with wings that shoots it out of its butt. And I bought a snowman. So I kind of thought I'll give the snowman to my son because my, when my brother comes to visit, he's coming next week. And when he comes to visit, he always likes to play. He's like a child, honestly. He's like a man child. And he brings toys to play with with my children and to, you know, like crafting kits to put together. He, he's, he's a man child. So he's going to love this. So I thought my son, he's kind of manly. He's not going to want, you know, a pink unicorn or a llama. So I thought I'd give my son the un or the snowman. And I can't decide what I'm going to give my daughter and my brother. They, neither one of them will probably care. My brother will not care at all which one he gets. And then, of course, I have my rainbow shooter. I didn't necessarily get one for my husband because I don't feel like he would appreciate it as much as the rest of us. And he can play with ours. So, because I'm figuring I'll probably be making dinner at some point and they can just have a ball war. So, anyway. So it sounds like that some of you guys have also gone shopping on Amazon <laughs> for the shooters. <laughs> They're so funny. So anyway, I do have to tell you though, when you when you first get them, they come they come preloaded. But the one that's loaded into the shooting hole um, has it's got like a dent around it. And that one does not really shoot out that great. So um, put that one aside, let it kind of get its shape back. I don't know how long it takes because mine has been about a week and a half now and it still is not perfectly in shape. But the other five balls work great that you can shoot them out at will. <laughs> so we're going to be having some ball shooting fun here as soon as my brother gets here and my daughter gets here. So that should be fun. All right, let's see. Lisa said she bought a bunch. I know they're hilarious. Um, what else do we have here? Anybody? Oh, you guys. Oh, some of you guys are in that horrible weather area. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you're all fine and things are good and you didn't lose anything important. Oh, these storms these around the country, these this season, is they're crazy. They're absolutely crazy. So uh, good vibes and prayers and thoughts going out to all of you guys. Um, I'm just kind of looking to make sure... <laughs> Got her house, her and her husband. Oh, that's so funny, Debbie. You guys are going to have a ball. And then, you know, if you have any people that come to visit, if you've got grandkids or kids or neighbors or whatever, um, they don't hurt when you get shot with them. Now, I guess I can't state for a fact that they don't hurt if you get shot in the eyeball. But um, we shot a lot of balls around here while they were here, and I never got shot in the eyeball once. They're kind of hard to aim. I mean, like, for a, from a distance. They don't, um, they're not that great. The aiming isn't that great. So if you're trying to shoot somebody in the eye, just don't. Okay. So, um, oh, a little update on my son. He is going to get released to go back to work next week from his hand surgery. So that is a fantastic news. We're very excited about that. He's, he's wanting to go back and make some money because he got paid, um, last Friday and he got paid goose egg because he hadn't worked <laughs> so he wants to get back to making some money um did we get the snow no we, we got some we think we got about three inches so you know three to four inches it's nothing to us to get three to four inches of snow so that was no big deal we shoveled it it's gone we're good to go um i'm kind of hoping that we don't have much snow now before my brother gets here he's supposed to fly into billings montana on sunday at some point i don't know when um, then my dad's going to pick him up from the airport because my dad lives up there. And then my dad's going to drive him down here, um, drop him off, hang out for a little bit, and then go back 
to Billings and then he'll come back and pick him up in I don't know, six days or so. So he should probably be here. Oh gosh. I don't even know. I need a calendar. I can't, I, I don't know the dates. Is Christmas on Saturday or something like that? I think he's going to come on like the 22nd or whatever. So uh, that should be fun. I also have a, a few other little surprises. We have this kind of little thing when my brother's here called OBX and they are presents that you open before Christmas. Um, and so that's so that we can play, you know, with stuff for a longer period of time. That's why he does that. And so these poppers are going to be an OBX item for them while, um, while he's here. And I've got a few other little gems and I'm assuming he's going to be bringing some stuff too, because he always does. He always brings, basically it's junk, but it's fun junk, you know, so dollar store stuff that, you know, it's, it's fun for like, you know, 20 minutes when you're an adult, you know, if you're a kid, it's probably fun for, oh my gosh, this is amazing stuff. But an adult, you know, you get bored with dollar store toys fairly quickly. Um, so yeah, so that's exciting. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I have some fun things to show you guys. I had my team meeting slash Christmas party, um, on Tuesday night and we had a lot of fun things going on. We had an ugly sweater contest. We had, uh, we shared some quick and easy dinner recipes. We had the dollar store hack, which I'll show you what I made. Um, we played bingo for prizes and what else did we do? I told some really bad jokes. Um, I think that was about it. We had a fantastic time. My brother lives in Tucson. So he'll be flying in from Tucson, Arizona, up to Billings, Montana, which is where we are both from. We, we, grew, we grew up there. Um, and so that's fun. Normally, when my mother was, uh, before my mother died, uh, my brother would come up every Christmas. He would fly into Billings and he would, they would get in her car and he would drive them both down here and then they'd stay for like a week. Uh, but after my mom passed away in 2019, um, he did not come last year. And of course, now her car, we have since, you know, sold that. So um, there's no car up there for him to use. So it's just my dad has a car. So my dad's going to drive him down here. So that's kind of fun. All right. Any other good comments? Yes, Nicole, I did grow up in Billings, Montana. Um, I moved there when I was about nine. And then I moved from Billings to Wyoming in the year 2000 with my husband when he got a job down here. So i I was basically raised in Billings, but I've lived most of my adult life, you know, with kids and everything here in Wyoming. So, but we do go back and forth quite a bit. It's only a two hour drive. So it's not that big of a deal to go up there. And of course we literally have, let's see, this is the shopping that we have that you guys would know of, um, Walmart and Maurice's. That's it. Oh, we have Walgreens. I don't really count that as shopping. So that's all the stores we have. So when we need to go shopping, like my daughter and I went to uh, for Black Friday shopping, we go to Billings because they have about you know a hundred and some thousand people up there, so they have quite a bit of stuff shopping wise that you can partake in. Um, and restaurants, we don't really have any restaurants here either. I mean, you've probably heard of Perkins, maybe that's and of course fast food. Those are our only oh and Qdoba. That's our only restaurants aside from some local places, you know, that we do frequent. Anyway, yes, I did grow up in Billings, Montana. And oh, Joy Ann Lynn says she finally caught me live. Yay, Joy Ann, I'm so glad. You know, you guys, if you actually subscribe to my channel right down here, there's a little button that says subscribe. If you subscribe and then click, there's like a little notification bell kind of un underneath there somewhere. And I think I'm on the right side. I don't know if the camera's flipped for me. Um, if you click that bell, YouTube is supposed to notify you every time I upload a video or go live. Um, and I think even like when I scheduled this video on Tuesday, I, I made this live event. Um, I think you get notified of that also if you are a subscriber and have clicked the bell. And then you can, when you get that email that says, oh, Barb's going to be live, you can click something that says like remind me or something like that, if I remember right. Or you can click the link to come to the video um, and then click the remind me button. So anyway. I think that's how it works. Uh, YouTube's algorithms are kind of crazy. Sometimes they will notify you of your subscriptions. Sometimes they don't. I don't know why or what the deal is, but that's just how it works. Um, oh, Cheryl's on and Cheryl says, can you guys give Barb a thumbs up? Cheryl's so sweet. Thank you, Cheryl. And yes, please do. And please share the video because that really helps my channel. Um, YouTube really is all about comments, thumbs up and sharing. Uh, that what That's what gets your videos out there and gets you noticed. Uh, that means they'll share it. So, I mean, if there are some people out there that watch maybe other stamping channels, um, because you guys are active on my videos and my channel, then 
uh, YouTube will send it to those people and say, hey, this is a channel or a video that you might be interested in. So any of those types of things, it's totally free for you, uh, for you to do that, to like, subscribe, and thumbs up. So I would appreciate that if you would do that. Okay, I think I'm going to flip the camera because the things that I want to show you, um, this forward-facing camera, the selfie camera, I think it's a little more blurry than the down camera. Um, and so I feel like the things just look better on that view. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it. So this is always a big issue for me because of the way I have my setup. So I'm just going to kind of cover the lens for the moment and hope that I can do this quickly. And there's my ceiling and I'm going to click the switch camera button, which never seems to work for me until I click it twice. I don't understand what that's about. Why do you have to click it twice? You should only have to click it once. But anyway, okay. And I think I'm having a hot flash because every single time I go live, I have a hot flash. So we're going to get rid of the jacket. All right. So you guys can see some of my things here. So as I told you during my team meeting slash Christmas party, we did something called a dollar store hack. And everyone who participated who did a dollar store hack went into a drawing for a prize. And I gave away um, a lot of prizes that night. Um, so we had a ton of fun. So this was mine. So I just found this thing at the dollar store and it had some strings on it that were kind of ugly so I did cut those off but this is how it came it didn't have this bow I put the bow on there so my plan is to make different things for different seasons or different holidays by using magnets so I'm going to put a magnet you know I don't even have to this this thing doesn't it doesn't come out but I feel like I can put a magnet in there and put a magnet on the back of this and then I can slide it in so all I did was to, like you know measure the width of this inside frame and I cut some of that well, it's retired now, but a lot of you probably have it. Peaceful Place Designer Series paper. I cut a chunk of that. And then I also used the Peaceful Cabin stamp set and the Cabin dies. And I believe the stamp set is sold out already, but the dies are still available to create this cabin. And then the little bit of a rolling hill. And I did another rolling hill. And then I did the trees in black glimmer paper. Okay. So I kind of layered all those things together. And let me dump it out again so you can sort of see how I layered it. So I have double dimensionals right here between my designer series paper and the cabin. I have the trees glued to the back of the cabin piece. And then I have a window sheet that I glued only at the bottom so you can't see the glue. And then I put dimensionals on this little piece here and put it on the front. And then I did do a silver star out of... I think it's our star dies that I did that out of. And I did that with a dimensional so it would kind of be the same height. And now since I said this is a window sheet that my stamping is done on and I used the Thinking Thanks and Peace stamp set. I used the Peace on Earth and when I did this, I cut the bird off of it. I cut the dove off because I don't always want to have the dove on there. And in this case, I did not. So I can easily put the dove back on if I want, but I didn't want to. And I did use Stays On ink on this stays on jet black ink it's permanent on most surfaces and so that's how I stamped that and then I just tied a bow with our white glitter ribbon and glued it onto the top of the frame so it'll just set you know on a table or a shelf or something like that and I just thought it was really cool so I was pretty excited about it and the fact that I can take this out and then do something else with it um I find that's going to be pretty helpful too. and this thing was a dollar you know, and I just used stuff that I already had in my stamp room to make it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it, honestly, you guys. And so we had some amazing things. Oh, yes, Velcro, Tana says, we could absolutely use Velcro on the back. But, you know, honestly, I don't even know if I'm going to need to do that anything. It doesn't seem to come out unless I, like, tip it all the way over, you know, and shake it out. Then it will come out. But to just have it setting on a table or a shelf, I don't know if, I don't know if it would actually come out. So I may not have to do anything. I would like to figure out something to do with these holes. I don't. I don't know what to do. I guess I could have put different ribbon in there. Um, and I still could. I don't know. Anyway, so that was mine. I did have uh, some of my team members. One of my team members used some small canvases and stacked them together and stamped on them to make it look like a little set of books. Super cute. Uh, one of my gals bought some kind of a little uh, wooden... Oh, It looked like a pallet, but it was tiny. And then she embossed and stamped on like a bunch of spatulas I mean it was just it, they were the cutest things and then one of my gals took a little silver tray that she found at the dollar store she spray painted it white and then she found some big foam dice 
that were about like maybe, you know, inch and a half across and she painted them white. And then she stuck like turtles on one side and hedgehogs on the other. Since we have hedgehogs coming out in our new catalog and she is going to give those to her grandkids to play tic-tac-toe. I mean, we had so many amazing ideas, you guys. My team members are brilliant and I'm just so thankful for all of them. We had so much fun. And then we played bingo and yeah, it was just a lot of fun. So that's that. Let me get rid of these items because I don't need them on my table. Then I wanted to give a shout out to some people that sent me some cards. This was a card that was included in a box of goodies that one of Kelly's team members sent to us when we were they were here last week. There was two different kinds of Oreos. There were some homemade seasoned pretzels, some delicious sea salt caramel fudge. Um, two bags of Fritos because you can't find Fritos in some parts of the U.S. And Sheridan, Wyoming is one of those places that you cannot get Fritos. And I need Fritos for some of my Mexican dishes. So Mary sent us a big box and then she sent this gorgeous card with it. So thank you so much, Mary. This is from one of my dear friends in Billings, Montana, who is also a stamper. This is her Christmas card this year. Gorgeous. Thank you, Jackie. And then last but not least is one of my very longtime customers of a sweetheart, sweetheart, sweet. Her name is Teresa. And every time for my birthday and Christmas every year, she sends me a gorgeous card and then she sends me a Starbucks gift card. But look at this Starbucks card, you guys. It's shaped like a wreath. Isn't that awesome? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is like, I was super excited about this. So while Dina and Kelly were here, this app, this happened to arrive. So the three of us went to Starbucks and had a drink on Teresa. So thank you so much, Teresa. I appreciate you so much. So I'm going to keep this and use it, you know, because you always need sample gift cards to put in things. Even though it's empty, it's still, you know, it's useful just to use as a sample. So there we go. All right. On to the business stuff that we have. Uh, we have classes coming out. Our Borders in Bloom online class is going to be ready next week. It's nine cards that uses the uh, bo basic border die. So you have this kind of fun rounded die. Uh, this one has kind of the envelope flap. This one uses the cloud die. You can kind of see there's some little sneak peek there. Super fun. And we have six more cards in the class. Um, the class itself, if you want the online only, it's 20 bucks. If you want a cardstock kit with some designer series paper, some embellishments and some ribbon, 45. Or if you want to get your cardstock kit for free, then you can order the what we call the whole shebang, which is the basic borders dies, the in bloom stamp set, and the pierced blooms dies, uh, the black matte dots, and the playful pets trim. And then you'll get the pattern party DSP also. So anyway, that's coming out next week. My iconic Sunny Sentiments class is coming out tomorrow. And the big deal about this is that I'm using that ombre glimmer paper in it. And all the cards are different because uh, we have four different colors of ombre glimmer paper in the package. I'm going to be using it today, so I'll show you. And this is one of my cards. I actually have a video for this linked in the description of this video if you're interested in checking that out. Um, yeah, so this is one of the cards you'll make. You'll actually make two of these in the class. You make eight total for each to each of four designs and you get in your kit you get all the pre-cut cardstock pieces to make the eight cards envelopes and the shippings included you get the metal moments embossing folders some ombre specialty paper and linen thread and champagne and basic rhinestone jewels so it's a good deal for 45 bucks or you can add the dies for 35.50 and the stamp set for 24.50 all right, handmade cards for sale i still have some i have one package of christmas cards left um so you can click on that in the link in the description of this video and that will get you a package of um, Christmas cards. I also have tons of all occasion cards. They're all $25 for 20 cards plus the shipping and the links are in the description. I think I have three of my elegantly said class left. They're all fun folds. They're amazing. And the kits are 45 and you can add on the bundle for a total of $93.50 if you want. I think I have six of the Eden's Garden Collection. If any of you guys have purchased this, this class is beautiful. You will not be sorry if you purchase this. I still have a couple of the Artistically Inked class. And then my three Christmas classes are 25% off if you buy two or more of them. So I have three. I've got the Peaceful Deer, the Christmas Season, and then the Sweet Stockings um, classes. And so if you purchase two or more of these, I'll give you 25% off. So you can email me, barb at barbstamps.com, and we can work the details out. Adhesive kits, I always have these for sale. They are packaged in these super cute little bags, multiple colors. Ooh, Pam said she got her catalog in the mail. Yay! That means the January to June holiday cat or catalogs are going out. Yay, Pam. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for all the thumbs up and everything. That's great. Um, adhesive kits, you can buy those either with classes or without. Links are in the description. Stamp Happy Academy, I have to tell you, we, Dina Kelly and I were here talking about Stamp Happy Academy well, while they were here. And we are going to start giving out random prizes. We are we have a Facebook group for the live portion of Stamp Happy Academy, and we're going to put challenges in there, and the winners of those challenges are going to get bundles, so that's kind of a big deal. We are also going to be doing an open house in the beginning of January that anybody can check out, so you can check that out on uh, Facebook, Stamp Happy Academy. I think that's all you got to type in on Facebook is Stamp Happy Academy. Um, and what else? Yeah, we've just got a few fun things that we are um, offering uh, with Stamp Happy Academy so uh, we can celebrate the members that we already have and then hope to get more members because it's an amazing website full of inspiration. You guys will not be sorry if you get in here. Um, everything is available to you if you have a subscription. It's kind of like Netflix. When you, If you have your subscription, you have access to literally everything on there. Uh, when you cancel your subscription, then of course you have access to nothing. So it's basically the same thing. As long as you're a member, you have access to everything. We have probably just about 50 classes on there that you have access to all the PDF files and all the videos for all those classes with your basic membership. Uh, we have premium, which includes all those classes plus three live classes a month. Dina just did hers in there today. I did mine, I think on the third and Kelly's doing hers next week. So those are about an hour and a half to two hour long live classes, uh, mostly focused on layouts and using up your designer series paper. So hint, hint, designer series paper. We're all hoarding it. I know you are, you know I am. Let's use it. And that's uh, pretty much, you'll find a lot of useful layouts in live only class so there you go and finally we are having our new catalog kickoff party um coming up january 4th through the 18th if you are a stamp happy academy basic or live or excuse me basic or premium member you get in for free um i think the information is on stamp happy academy website <clears throat> excuse me um if you're also if you're a team member of one of us in our levels one through three you also get into the catalog kickoff for free if you're none of those people um and you don't want to get it for free you can pay ten dollars the link is in the description of this video you pay ten dollars you get in um we're going to have a meet and greet live with dina and kelly and myself we're going to have three live crafting sessions where each one of us will demonstrate uh, projects using new products from the january to june and celebration brochure we're going to have card challenges with prizes a mystery stamping with a prize random prizes um, we're going to have sample galleries filled with tons of inspiration we always load up all of our swap cards in there for you guys we're going to have game night not exactly sure what that's going to be as of yet it will not be bingo i can tell you that but it'll be some other fun game and there's more so anyways you guys yeah don't forget to check that out if you're a stamp happy academy basic or premium member you get in for free otherwise you can pay ten dollars not that expensive okay first project It's kind of a double project here. I'm gonna pull my hair back really quick because it's always hanging in my face, driving me crazy. Um, we are going to be using the Pattern Party Designer Series paper. This is the paper that is also used in our Borders in Bloom online class. So here's another little fun thing you can do with this paper. This happens to be a host only paper, meaning if you place a $150 order, or you have a party that's a minimum of $150 in sales, you can buy this paper with your host rewards, okay? Um, it's $18. I think if your party is exactly $150, you'll pay three bucks for it. It's 48 12 by 12 sheets. So there you go. Okay. Oh, Nancy says it's well worth the $10. Yes, Nancy is correct, but Nancy gets in free because she is a team member, right, Nancy? Yay! Okay. Um, and Jean just got here just in time. Jean, you are correct. Okay, so we're going to be using this paper. I'm going to be using the Pierce Blooms dies. That is also um, in our class. Um, I'm going to be using the scallop contour dies just so I can get one of those fun scalloped rectangles. Um, I've also brought in the retch retch rectangle stitched framelits. Debbie, I don't know how I remember anything, honestly. That's why it's all written down. Um, we're going to be using these frame these framelits also, and we're going to be using, I think I might use the stamp set on the inside of the card. We'll see when I get there. And then I've got a little sneak peek for you of a stamp set that is uh, something you can earn during celebration. If you place a $100 order during celebration, this is something you can choose. It's called Special Moments. Um, I really am happy. I'm really excited about this one. Sometimes they give us stamp sets, you know, these word sets and yeah they're okay but these have a really 
there's a lot of really nice sentiments in here and I like the fonts of them. So I'm just, I'm really happy with this. I'm super excited. It's a celebration reward choice. Okay. So the first thing we're going to be creating here today is a gift bag. Okay. Let me get this stuff out of the way. So we're going to be creating a gift bag and I already have some of this stuff done. So what I've got here is it takes a full sheet of cardstock. You cut it in half. You have two pieces, five and a half by eight and a half. Okay, easy peasy. Then you're going to take your designer series paper, whatever pattern you want that coordinates with your cardstock, and you're going to cut this to five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Okay, and then we're going to glue this to our uh, cardstock layer. So let me just get glue all the way around this. And I like to use liquid glue on some of these projects just because, you know, it's, you, I can be cheap sometimes. And liquid glue is pretty inexpensive when you have to cover a big surface like this. And we're going to get this on here. Try to get it centered. And I think that's, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So you can see I've already cut a hole out of this. So I'm going to cut a hole out of this for you live. I actually brought my stamp and cut and emboss machine over here. So I will be cutting that hole. But uh, I wanted to mention this first. This is one of those like cheap lunch sacks. Oh, do I have a hole? A big one? I do. And I bought these, oh my gosh, like a million years ago. Okay, not really that time. Oh, we have somebody here watching for the first time, and I'm going to butcher your name. I'm gonna, is it Eineke? I know I butchered that, and I'm totally sorry. We have a new watcher. Yay! Thank you so much for watching. Um, so these are like just lunch sacks. They come either in like a brown crafty kind of color. I have white and brown craft, so I picked white. I'm, I think you can still buy these somewhere. I don't know where. But anyway, I cut it to, where's my trimmer? Six and a half, I think is what I did. So I put my bag on my trimmer. This is the bottom of the bag. And I lined it up at six and a half and I chopped it off. Yep, that's exactly what I did. Six and a half inches and I chopped off the top, okay? So that's what we're going, that's actually going to be our bag for what we're doing here. So I need to run this through with the die. So I said I was using the rectang rectangle stitched framelits. Well, they're not called framelits anymore. These are this is an old set. They're just called dies now. Rectangle stitched dies. And so I'm going to bring my stamp and cut and emboss machine in here. And I apologize for the loudness of this silicone mat, but this is a tip for you guys. I put my machine on my table on a silicone mat, and that sucker does not move when I am using it. A lot of times when you're like cranking your stuff through on your handle, the machine is flying all over the place. Not with this thing. This is like a baking mat is what this is. I got this at, I, don't know, I think somebody gave it to me as a gift. Um, and so it just sits on my table and um, yeah, this thing will not go anywhere. Oh good, Carol says Walmart has the bags, perfect. Okay, so it's just a standard sandwich, plate two. Oh, I have a piece of paper in there. Plate one and plate two, cutting plate three. Um, I'm going to add this on to, I'm going to put my die on here. And yes, I, in fact, that Kelly and Dina were at my house last year and I, they saw mine and they were like, oh my gosh. So we had to run to Walmart so they could buy some. So they both have these mats. Well, it's not the same, but it's a similar thing. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure that this isn't about the right same, the same spot as it is on my other piece. I'm going to tape it with a piece of washi tape. And then I'm going to run this through. So now my machine will not move because it's stuck on my silicone mat. And so I just went one way and then back the other way and then we'll be done. I don't normally do my die cutting live just because my machine is over in another part of my stamp room. And I just, yeah, I just don't want to bring it over here all the time. And it takes more time unless you, I like to die cut things beforehand. Okay, so there, that's going to be my handles. So I'm going to push this out of here. Okay, so now I have two pieces to make my bag and I have my bag. Let me get rid of the rest of these things here. And this. Okay, so now what you do is you glue the bag in between the um, layers of cardstock. 
So I'm going to kind of push this flat like that. So when I open it, it'll still open up nice and I can put my treats in there. But I'm going to attach it to the in, in between these two pieces of cardstock like so. So I'm going to first add glue to this side. So I'm just going to use liquid glue again because it's a, quite the large surface that I need to cover. And there we go. We're just going to kind of lay this. And these bags are not cut perfectly straight by any means. You can totally see down here it's not straight. But it's straight enough that it'll work. Okay. So now we're going to bring our glue in and do this other side. And just, and I'm not putting like a ton of glue. Uh, the beads that I'm using are very small. And so I just want to line up these two pieces of cardstock now. I don't care where the bag is. I just want to line up my cardstock pieces, okay? There we go. And so then we can open up our bag and we can put stuff in it. Like who wouldn't want to get a seal and a seal plus and a liquid glue, right? And so we can put all those things in our bag and then we can tie it shut with some ribbon if that's what we want to do uh, or whatever. But wouldn't it be cool if we had a matching card for this bag that was on the bag? It would. So let me do that. So I'm going to bring in my uh, pieces and parts for that. Okay, here's that. And then I use the uh, pierced blooms dies. And I went over to my machine today and I went hog wild. Look at that. And I just die cut a million, not a million, but I don't know, a lot. Um, I did a whole bunch of green leaves out of granny apple. And then I did a whole bunch of different size flowers out of flirty, real red, coastal cabana, and a few little accent pieces in Bermuda Bay. And so we're going to make a quick card with these. So here's the pieces that I need. At least I think these are the pieces I need. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Okay, so we have a Bermuda Bay card base. Easy peasy, eight and a half by five and a half. Oh, I have a sneak peek for you guys. I have a Bermuda Bay layer. This is four by five and a quarter. And I ran it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine with a brand new folder called Gingham. Yay! It's a standard folder, so not um, 3D. So you just need your platform and then your cutting plate, your embossing folder and your cutting plate. And when you use embossing folders, and this is any embossing folder that you use, you put your paper in it, okay? You stick it on your platform and you wanna run it through hinge first, okay? You wanna make sure that the hinge is the first thing that hits your roller because that way when it's going through and it's super tight, the air can leak, the air can come out of this open end here. If you put it in open end first and you run it through, you get a lot of air pressure built up in there. And sometimes it can crack your folder and actually cut it in half, the air pressure coming out of there. So always put your folders in hinge first, okay? Pro tip for you guys. All right, so we don't need the folder anymore. So this is going to go on here, obviously. Oh, here's my little stems. I didn't want them to get bent, so I stuck them in with my large papers. And then here is that little white layer that I told you about um, out of the color and contour dies, scalloped contours. Okay. So we're going to do our decorating on this little piece right here. And the first thing I want to do is kind of arrange my stems. And so I'm going to use uh, one or two blue dots with for this. Not sure exactly how many I'm going to need to use. But I am just going to start putting some of these things kind of together. Okay, I think I'm going to have to use another glue dot. So I'm going to pull one off with my fingernail and stick it on top of these. And then we're going to add a couple more stems. You can see that the stem, you can put it either direction. It doesn't, you know, you can put it so it's facing one direction or the other. Either way is fine. And I just want them to kind of be apart a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to add one more glue dot to the front here, I think. Okay. And then I can kind of arrange them how I want them to look. And then I'm going to add this to the front of this layer. So I'm going to put it about like this. And I'm going to end up cutting off these little stems, these extra ones. 
So I will be doing that uh, later after we get the whole thing done. Okay, so that's kind of what I want it to look like a little bit. Actually, I think I'm going to throw another glue dot on there because it doesn't look like it wants to stay where I want it to stay. There we go. Okay, so then we just need to kind of like put all of our flowers together. And I'm going to put my little cheater piece up here um, out of the way so you guys can't really see it because I don't want you to see it just yet. But I need to be able to see what I'm doing because sometimes I can't remember what the heck I figure out. Okay, so I've got two of these little guys in Coastal Cabana. I've also got two of them in Real Red. And I'm going to glue them together. And I'm going to offset them so that they kind of make like a full bloom. So just like that, and like that, okay, and then these little guys are going to go on, and we're going to use some dimensionals. I'm going to use mini dimensionals for all of these pieces, just because that way I can tuck my leaves under and my dimensional won't get in the way. Oh, that did not stay together. What the heck? Either I didn't use enough glue or something. Oh, Debbie says her husband got home and is really hungry for dinner. Barb or Greg? Yeah, I think you can do nachos, absolutely. My husband is probably home too, but he knows. It's Facebook Live Day. There's no dinner happening right now. Okay, and if you want dinner right now, you get it yourself. That's kind of how it works. Okay, so we're going to put those two little goodies on there. And then I have two of these flowers. They look the same. They're the same shape. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the center of both of these. And then I have these other little tiny flowers. There's just so much to choose from in these dyes. It's just, it's crazy. And we're gonna add the little guy like that. And this one, I think, this one, I'm gonna kind of tuck in behind that. So let me grab a dimensional here and we'll do that. I'm excited to hear how the nachos go over, Debbie. Okay, so we'll stick that there. And then this, you know what? I may have to move this. No, it's too late. It's going to be fine. And then this is going to go over here somewhere. And then we have this little guy and this little guy. And they're going to have the same centers as those other flowers did. And these little dies are really fun because these little tiny ones, there's two of them on there. Oh, that die looks, that got a little cut off. Well, hopefully nobody will notice. And only you guys will notice now because I probably I told you. So I probably could have kept it a secret if I wouldn't have said anything. Although I doubt it. You guys are pretty, pretty Johnny on the spot. You would have noticed. Oh, I have too many dimensionals here. That's what's going on. I have a dimensional literally stuck on the edge of my fingernail. Oh my gosh, get off. That one's going in the trash because I feel like it got screwed up. Okay, flower arranging takes a long time. <laughs> maybe like that, and then maybe like this, maybe underneath. Is that how that's gonna work? Like that maybe? Okay, then we also have this fantastic bow that, look at that, where we had our glue dots, the bow can cover, so that's fun. And then I have a bunch of leaves that we need to stick on here, and these are also in the die set. There are so many things in this die set, it's crazy. So I'm going to add a few, a couple, not a few, two, two is a couple. I have to tell my son that. He's like, well, what does that mean? And I'm like, um, a few is more than two, but like not 10. Well, how do you know this? I'm like, I don't know. You just know. I'm trying to get this leaf underneath here. There we go. I'm going to take your pick tool. I kind of want to manipulate this a little bit. There we go. Okay. Then I have these big flower, these big leaf images here, and I'm going to use just a lot, or I'm just going to use glue dots on these. So I'm just going to kind of cut these right down the middle. And then if I have to snip off these little excess pieces, I will. So I lied. This is not a quick card. But it's amazing. It's an amazing slow card. I guess it depends. Depends on how much putzing you feel like doing with it. Apparently, I felt like doing a bunch. 
So I'm just adding a little bit of glue to the backs of these leaves. And since I use those small um, dimensionals, I'm not having any issues with tucking my leaves underneath. They're tucking under really nicely. I feel like if, you, if I would have used large dimensionals, um, I may have had a bit more of a struggle to get all these under than I'm having right now. Uh, that's going to have to come down, I think. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to use these tiny little flowers here. And I'm going to switch my Take Your Pick tool, whoops, to a different end, if I can even find it. Oh my, what did I do with it? Well, I can't find it, so... I'm going to pull this stylus out of my scoring board. Uh, the other end of this, the, the piece you can switch it out with, is a dual-ended, um, what is this called? I just said it. Like a scoring tool? Now I can't remember. It's got a special name. Can anybody help me out? What are these called? I don't know. But anyways, I'm using it to like make these flowers a little bit more 3D. So I'm going to press the middle of the flower with the whatever stylus I think that's what it's called right stylus uh, with my stylus and that way when I add them to the card they'll be a little bit more 3d ish yes you guys gosh what the heck sometimes words are just really really hard okay so we need our glue dots again so I am going to add these little flowers to my roll of glue dots and then I will pull them off and place them where I want them to go. All right. Okay. Oh, for those of you, we were talking about this a few weeks ago on uh, one of the lives that I did. We were talking about a show on Hulu called Only Murders in the Building. And it was a show that had Selena Gomez, Martin Short, and Steve Martin. I mean, what a combination of people. And it was awesome absolutely awesome it was not the suspense of the end was not what i anticipated um but it was awesome so if you guys haven't watched it and you have hulu i highly highly recommend watching it because it was great okay so i am going to come in here and kind of snip off <clears throat> excuse me these little stems because i don't want them hanging off of my layer but before I do that, I need to put some. I do need to put some rhinestones in here. Or you know what? We have these brand new iridescent rhinestones that are coming out in the new catalog, and they're really amazing. Look at how pretty they are. Yeah, they make me happy. So we are going to use. Let's see, how big is a big one? That seems a bit large. We're going to go with medium, and I'm going to put them here and here so that these two little flowers that don't have a center will now have one and then i'm going to pull these small ones off and put them on these other flowers that have the smaller or the colored centers so we're using a lot but it's okay this card is amazing you're not going to mail this this is a card that you are going to hand deliver to somebody because it's going to be attached to the amazing bag that you created for the card also. Okay, so we are going to attach this layer to our embossed layer here. So I'm just gonna try to line that up so it's all centered. I hope that's good. And then because this is embossed again, I'm gonna use liquid glue and we're gonna use this to attach it to the front of the main card base here. I like that idea, having Debbie's husband get pizza. He could go get it for both of you, Debbie. That's a fantastic idea. Okay, so there is the card, mostly. And then I do have a little inside thing. I think, hmm, I think I'm just going to add this. I couldn't decide if I wanted it at the bottom or on the side. I'm going to go ahead and put it at the bottom. So it was long enough to go up the side, but we don't need it to be that long, so... We're going to just stick it at the bottom. That way we just have a little bit of fun on the inside of the card too. So it's not just the outside of the card that's fun. It's the inside also. And get this lined up. 
should be doing this the way I normally do, but I didn't. Okay, there we go. What was the name of it? Sorry, Stirring Burger. Uh, oh, it was the Stylus, Debbie. That's what we decided it was called. Okay, so here is our card. So pretty. Oh my gosh, I just love looking at it. And so now we need to, well, I have to dump out the gifts that are in here. And I'm going to fold it back up. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to take one of our clear envelopes and I'm going to cut this part of it off. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my trimmer and I'm going to put this in just so it's just barely over the line, you know, the, the, the track. And hopefully that cut that off. Yes, it did. So now I just have a little pouch. And I can put my card into the pouch. Get in there, you. Okay. Oh, what do we got here? We got a dimensional backing. And then I'm going to bring in some tear and tape. And I'm going to put that right here at the top of the envelope. So these clear envelopes we sell in the catalog. And then I'm going to pick off the backing if I can get it off. I feel like it's coming off or is the whole thing coming off? Oh, we're good. Okay. And then I'm going to stick this on the front of the card. I hope we want to get it in there evenly. Okay. So now we have a gift with a card on the front that you can remove out of the plastic sleeve. And then the last thing we would do is find some real red ribbon. Here's some. And you would just tie it around here and tie it into a bow. I'm not sure if this bow is going to turn out. No, that was horrid. <laughs> I think I need to have it come through the hole like this first. <laughs> Struggle is real, you guys. Okay, so we're going to do this. And then we're going to try to take a little more care in wrapping our ribbon around here to make... Oh my gosh, what the heck? I think this is like some super slippery ribbon. And so I'm on the struggle bus with it because it's so slippery. Wow, I am there. Okay, so we got that. Bring out some scissors, snip that off. And there we have it. So there is project number one. It's actually two projects. It's a bag and a card. So it's a card on a bag. Okay. Yay. I love this. So give that a thumbs up if you guys wouldn't mind, because that's pretty amazing. I must say so myself. So I have to show you where my inspiration came from. I had received a swap at a founder circle event. It was a Stampin' Up! event that I went to. Oh, dear Lord. I'm going to say 10 years ago. And I received this as a swap from a very lovely demonstrator named Ruth Bingle. She is one of my dear friends. And this is where the idea came from. So I never gave this away because I always wanted to keep it so that I could recreate it every so often when I thought about it. And she used the same thing, the white bag. This was back when we had oval punches, you know, to make the hole. Or maybe it was a circle. I don't know, whatever. But punches would work really easily to make your holes. And, of course, the same thing, clear envelope, card on the bag. And then about three years ago, I made this one. Um, using uh, the products that were available at the time. It's the same thing, but this time I used a craft colored bag. And so, yeah. So I have a few samples to share with you guys. Christmas, Christmas, and then not Christmas. And so I don't know about you guys, but I am, I'm tired of making Christmas crafts. Honestly, I've been making Christmas crafts since like July. So I want to make some new stuff like this. Okay. So let me put that aside and I'm going to bring in the supplies for my next project. I'm going to put my die away though so I don't lose it. Ooh, here's another little sneak peek item that I didn't actually use. Oh, you know what I meant to do? I meant to stamp on that card. Duh. I told you I was going to use that stamp set from Celebration and I never did it. <laughs> I'm going to use basic gray. The ribbon that I used is our real red... 3 8 inch double stitched satin ribbon. The item is 151155. Pretty, pretty ribbon. Ooh, we have someone else joining for the first time. This is Marsha. Hello, Marsha. Thank you so much for joining us. 
All right, guys, so I meant to do this before I got done with the whole thing, so now we're going to do it now. Let's hope we can get it on here straight. Just a little high from me. And then we can slide this card back into our sleeve, and then it's on our bag, and now it's done. Okay. So let me get all this stuff out of the way. And, oh, this is another little sneak peek that I didn't use, but look at our new brass butterflies. They're super thin. They won't give the post office any problems, so you can just load your card up with these things, and the mailman won't care. These, they're a little bit bumpy, but I think you can get uh, get away with them if you put, like, a cover on your card or something like that. That's typically what I do when I'm mailing them out. Okay, we've got a bit of a mess going on here with all kinds of stuff around. We don't need that. We don't need that. Probably don't need the stylus, but I'm sure we'll need some scissors. We don't need all these bits, so we're going to get those off. And this. Okay, let me get my next project. So this is actually project number three, technically. Okay, so we are going to be using this ombre specialty paper. It's basically glitter paper as far as I'm concerned. And it's full sheets. And this is actually cut to 6 by 12 but you get them at, there's, there's a full sheet of each color. So you have a full sheet of yellow, so you have the lighter yellow at this end, and then it kind of gets ombre down to the dark. Uh, the blue is the same. You have the light up here, and then it comes down, comes down to like the dark. Same with the purple. Starts light, ends up dark, and then the poppy parade. Same thing. Awesome. So this is, I decided to use a little bit of this. I did use this in my iconic Funny Sentiments class. I showed you the card at the beginning of the show here. I'm also going to use uh, these few things. I'm actually going to be making a gift card holder, you guys, because I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are still shopping. You don't know what to buy those teenagers on your list or your son who doesn't need or want anything, but you want to get him something. So you get him a gift card to Home Depot so he can like do some home improvements on his house. So we always need gift card holders. So I'm going to make one today and it's kind of a cool one. It's called a Hidden Hinge gift card holder. Um, I found it in my files on my computer. I think it was about 10 years ago that I made one before and I had forgotten all about it. I didn't save it, but I ran across it. I, I got a new computer, so I'm transferring things over. And so as I'm transferring things, I'm noticing things that I had saved that I hadn't actually used. And so this is something that's, it's, it's been a long time. Okay, so we're going to be using a bit of our neutral 6x6 paper. I'm choosing the Knight of Navy pattern. So we have all the different colors in our neutrals collection. You get four sheets of each color, two of each pattern in that color. So I chose to use this particular pattern on my gift card holders. This is kind of going to be more masculine-based gift card holder than female-based. But of course, you can, I mean, it's not, it couldn't be for a female, and it doesn't have to be for a man, but you know what I'm saying. So it's kind of more manly colors, I guess. So I've got some Knight of Navy ink. I've got our Banners Pick-A-Punch. I've got some Versamark. I've got my favorite um, holiday greeting set called Holly Jolly Wishes, and we're going to be using the Merry Christmas here uh, on this gift card holder. I've got that right there. We're also going to be using the seasonal labels dies only because I needed a tiny circle. And so I found this little tiny die in there, and I got my little circle. So that's the only reason I use that. If you have like a small circle punch or something like that, it would be perfect. Pretending to look like I'm working while I'm watching you. Oh, Carol, you're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Um, and so then I picked out the Snowflake Wishes and the So Many Snowflakes dies. I know we had another Snowflake die set in the holiday catalog, but I believe they're sold out. So I wanted to use something that if you didn't have it, you could still get it. Or a lot of you probably have this um, in your arsenal of stamping stuff. Okay, so we have a gift card, of course. We have our little piece of designer series paper. And I forgot to write down what it measured. It is... One and five eighths by four and seven eighths. That's the size of the DSP. Okay. Then we have two pieces of Knight of Navy. We have one piece that measures, oh, this one's cut wrong. This is two and a half by 11. Okay, so it's a long strip, two and a half by 11. And this is supposed to be three and three quarters by 10, but I forgot to do the 10. And I left it at 11 inches long. So we're going to cut this off um, at 10 over there on the edge. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we have the proper pieces. 
Okay. Oh, I guess we need to open this up again. I need another 25 to 30 a year more. Oh, I know what you're saying, Debbie. I, yeah. Okay, so our skinny piece are two and a half by 11. We're going to score this at what? I forgot already. What did I do with my little cheater piece? Oh my, it's not going to be good if I can't find it. Oh, okay, here we go. This is actually scored at five and 10. I should have remembered that. That's like super easy. Get my cutting blade out of the way and we've got it at five and now we're going to slide it over to 10. Score it again. And then I'm going to rotate it and line it up at three quarters of an inch on that side of the track. I just find it's easier so I can hold onto it with my left hand and operate the blade with my right. So I'm going to line it up at three quarters of an inch and we're going to score it again. Okay, and then we're going to do a little cutting. So we're going to start our cutting blade here at the top and we're going to cut down to that first score line. Then we're going to pick it up so it doesn't cut and we're going to bring it down to that other score line and we're going to cut straight down. So this is, we kind of have these little flaps now on the ends. Okay. So our other piece that's three and three quarters by 10, we're going to score this at four and a half, get my cutting blade out of the way again, four and a half and nine. Okay. Let me get that to nine. We're going to score that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to rotate it, find that three quarter inch mark on the right side of the track. We're going to score it and then we're going to cut again down to the first score line, lift, move, and cut again. Okay, so we should be done with that. So now we have these, this kind of thing going on here. So I am going to snip off this little corner just like that and I did that at a bit of an angle. This one I am also going to do at a bit of an angle. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this little piece here, cutting that at an angle. And I'm also going to cut this little tab at an angle. It's just so I feel like it's just going to fit together better if you do this, if you angle them just slightly. Okay. So now we need to uh, work with our, this is the top of the hinged gift card holder. It's actually the hidden hinge. And so we're going to fold on that score line furnish that and then we're going to fold this one in this little guy and I'm making sure it lines up at the top here and then the third fold is going to be this last piece and the same thing I'm going to make sure it lines up at the top and the edge here and then we're going to do that with it okay so that's what we have and now we're going to put this piece together so we're going to do the same thing we're going to fold on that long line so that's number one here, this is number two, making sure it lines up at the top, and it does. And then number three is going to come over, and we're making sure it all lines up as well. So this one we can actually glue together now, okay? So I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue here, and I'm going to fold this piece over. All right, then I'm going to put glue all over this edge piece here and I want to make sure that it gets to the edges so I'm using the liquid glue and you can see that the beads that I'm squirting out are so tiny but yet it is enough that it will stick okay and I'm going to bring that over onto this piece here and do the same thing all right so then I'm going to kind of hold this down fold that over make sure it's all nice and good Use my bone folder. So now I have like a little pocket, a little pouch. Okay. So then I'm going to bring my lid back and I need a piercing mat. Here we go. And I'm going to poke a hole in this little part right here with my take your pick tool. I'm going to center it from side to side and I'm going to bring it up about a quarter of an inch. Okay. There's no real right or wrong here. It's just, it's a guesstimation. All right. Then I'm going to bring my pouch and you decide what side you want to be the front. Typically when you're working with the fronts of things, it's the nicest, most finished piece or finished size. So we're going to say that this is going to be the front. Okay. So I'm going to flip that over. So the front is facing down now and I'm going to line it up between this fold line and this fold line. 
okay? And I've got about a quarter inch. I know it's really hard to see because it's the same color paper, but it's about a quarter inch from the top of my bottom piece to the top of this little flap here. Okay, so we're gonna fold or lay that down and I'm gonna fold this over and I'm gonna kind of give myself a little mark where I can see it. So now I can see where I need to poke a hole and then I'm gonna poke a hole, okay? So then I'm gonna bring in our little brads. Well, those are not brads. These are brads, our square and circle brads. Um, and since my cardstock is dark, I'm gonna pick a black one. And I'm gonna bring that little brad through this piece and this piece here. Okay, so there's my brad. And I recommend snipping off the legs because they're kind of long. And so just find some what I call cruddy scissors. These are ones I use to cut my stamps. And cut off some of the leg because you don't need it all. It's too long. And then we're going to separate the legs of the brad. Okay. And we're going to press them down. So that's all we've done so far. We just have this little mechanism here. And I like to take a hammer and kind of hammer it so it's kind of flat. It still rotates, but it's a lot flatter. And you can see that's a little bit flatter also. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little stamping on this. And I should have, I do this every time. You guys probably know, and you're probably just waiting for me to mess up. I should have stamped this before, but it is what it is. And I'm going to do it now. So again, this is the front of the card. So I'm going to use Versamark and this tiny little set of snowflakes this little guy right here it's so cute and so dainty that it won't be too much for a man card i don't think and i'm just going to use versamark and then i'm just going to randomly stamp this guy all over and i always start in the middle when i'm doing any sort of random stamping i always start in the middle and work my way out uh, if you don't do that a lot of times you'll end up where you have too much space uh, the space is like just not quite small enough for one more stamp or it's too big for two stamps. So if you start in the middle and work your way out, um, you'll have better luck. Okay, I need to bring in a scratch paper so I can go off the edge here. And so I'm just inking this up in my Versamark and now I can just pretty much finish this up going around the outer edges now because I did all the stuff on the inside and now I'm on my way out okay so this might be hard for you guys to see but it is pretty cute I'll bring it up closer so you can see how cute that is and I decided to use Versamark because I wanted you to be able to see it but I didn't want it to be like if I did it in Night of Navy it's like pretty dark you can see the difference Okay, I didn't want it to be quite that dark, so that's why I used this. Okay, uh, let's see, I do need that again, but I don't need this at the moment. Okay, so we're getting close to being done here. All right, so then what you want to do is you're going to fold that in, and then you're going to fold this over, and then we have our little mechanism here. That's how it hides, and then we put our gift card in there. It's amazing. Okay. But first I need to add my designer series paper, so I'm gonna do that. And I feel like I got ink on this and I'm kind of mad at myself, but it's fine. Okay, where's my seal? I can use my seal to add this. Whoops, I want this side to be showing. So this is where I'm gonna put the adhesive. So we're gonna add this to the little top flap here. And it should be just enough and we just have a little bit showing, a little bit of the Knight of Navy cardstock, okay. Oh, so much fun. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick my gift card in. And you realize this doesn't open up all the way. That's totally fine because the gift card is just going to slide in there and stick up like that. And then you're just going to close the lid on it. And then you're just going to whip it open and then they can have access to the gift card and then it just closes right back down. So we want to glue this closed now. So I recommend having your gift card in there, having your having it all done so that there's enough thickness there that when you fold it up and close it, that it, it's going to want to go back and forth into the same spot. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to close up the top. So we're going to add our glue to the top here. Get going, you. Okay, yep. Come across. And then we're going to add the glue to this little piece right here. 
and then that's it. And the reason I flattened, like I smashed that little brad down so it was a little bit flat so that it can actually hopefully get glued down. Oh, and I, need, I do need to go all the way in here like this. Okay. So now we're going to bring this over. We're going to close it. We're going to make sure that it all lines up nicely. So we got the top and we have this little side right here. Okay. I feel like I just got, I must have, oh, I do. I have some adhesive on this piece of scratch paper and I got it on my layer there. Okay, so now that's what we have. So we have our little thing and you can get your gift card out. You can close it back up and it, it kind of looks like a little package, which I think is kind of fun. So then what I have here is some strips. I have a little strip for my sentiment. This is three, three and a half by three quarters. And then with the snowflake dies, I did cut the darkest end of that glitter paper I cut out so you can see this is nice and shiny and fun so I cut that out of the darkest end and then I cut a smaller one out of white okay so we're just going to add some adhesive to the center of this little snowflake here I wish I had some more samples to show you guys I didn't have a chance to make any more today because um, I was just I had other things going on uh, so we're only going to get a Christmas one, but I'm sure I'll revisit this because this, this is a fun little thing. And then, as I told you before, I used the seasonal labels dies because I needed a tiny circle. We don't sell a circle punch anymore. You probably have some in your arsenal, so if you do, that's, that's the perfect thing to do. But I don't have one, so I am just going to snip this little edge off here. And so now I have a little tiny circle that I can now add to the center of my snowflake. So I can have a little bit more glitter. And I get it's glitter and I'm making it for a guy, but I kind of feel like you get a little bit of leeway at Christmas with bling when you're talking about men and men's cards. I don't think they would really have much to say, you know, at Christmas. So um, I need some rhinestones though, because I do need to put a rhinestone in the middle. Where are they? Here they are. Because I thought, you know, I'm just going to go for it. Oh, whoops. Are those? I need like a big one. Ooh, what am I What am I doing here? I don't have any big ones. Hold on. I have to say, that's pretty rare when I use up all the big gems on the sheet before I use up the small ones. So we're just going to get a new sheet out here and get our big gem out of the center there we go okay so now i'm going to attach this to the top but i'm going to make sure i don't put it down here so i'm just going to i'm just going to add glue to like these three snowflake what do you even call these arms do snowflakes have arms i, I don't know we're going to say they do so we're going to put those right there and so while those do a little bit of drying we are going to um bring in our sentiment stamp and now i don't want um, I only wanted to say Merry Christmas. I don't want whatever whatever else this says, and I can't remember what it is, but I don't want it. I just want Merry Christmas. So I'm going to mask that off with some scotch tape. And then I'm going to ink it up in my navy pad. And then the most important step of this is to remove your um, tape. And so then I'm going to stamp this on my little skinny strip here. I think I told you this was three quarters um, by about three and a half. Ooh, that looks good. Now I'm going to throw this in the garbage so that I don't have to deal with that again because that'll make a mess. All right. And then I'm going to snip off the end of this because we're going to put it right to the edge of the card here. There we go. And then we're going to use our banners pick a punch. And I'm going to snip off the end. That's perfect. And I just noticed when I stuck this in the banners pick a punch that this is not a straight cut at all there okay and I was I should have done this before well I have a cheater one that I've already done because it's not quite dry yet and if I try to do this little thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna muck it up so I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna very gently kind of pretend like I'm curling ribbon on the end and then I'm going to curl it in the center and then I'm gonna curl it out so this again might not be something that you you would might maybe want to hand deliver this or put it under your Christmas tree or something like that so that this doesn't get smashed because this is kind of a cool little effect when you do that with your label strips 
um, that they make these kind of puffy banners and they're pretty cool looking. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of 3D action on that sentiment strip. And that's it, you guys. You just open it up, you pull out your gift card, you can put the gift part card right back in there, close it up, and there it is. So it did take a little while to do, but once you like and i would so i would suggest watching this video again and using like some crappy cardstock that you don't care about or even some typing paper to practice making one first um just so you don't mess up your good cardstock or your good designer series paper so just do a little practicing on it um because it's not hard to do the measurements are very straightforward very easy um and it's not hard, but it's just, it looks complicated, but it really isn't. So there we go. So we've got that was one of our projects today. And then I'll bring in my other fantastic project, which was the old card on a gift bag. So we used a little lunch sack that you can buy at Walmart. And this is one sheet of cardstock. This is two five and a half by eight and a half pieces of cardstock. Um, designer series paper stuck on them five and a quarter eight and a quarter and then one of our clear envelopes is attached to the front and then the card just slides in and out of that so there you go guys now I think I don't think I'm going to be live until the new year and I hate to say that because I really enjoy doing this for you guys but next week is Christmas my brother and my daughter are both going to be here and I don't want to take time away from them because I don't get to see them very often um it takes me an entire day to plan these projects, I swear. I am the worst designer in the history of the world, and it just takes me forever to design things. So it takes me all day to get prepared for this class that I do for you guys on Thursday nights. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be live again until the new year. Um, we'll see. I mean, I may just randomly pop on. Who knows? But don't count on it. Okay? So as always, I would appreciate your orders in my store. Link below, shoppingwithbarb.com. Uh, my host code for the month is also listed down there. All the links to my classes are down there. Again, if you want any of my Christmas card classes um, that are 25% off, message me. I'm either here through Facebook or not Facebook. Message me. Or you can message me on Facebook or email me, barb at barbstamps.com. Um, and I can send you a PayPal invoice. Or the rest of the links to my classes are in the description. So don't forget to register for the new catalog kickoff that starts January 4th. If you're a Stamp Happy, Lie, or Premium, or Basic member, or one of my team members in levels one through three, and Kelly and Dina's too, that's free. Um, otherwise, it's only $10. So $10 is a pretty good price for everything that we offer you guys in those classes. So um, you won't be sorry. Okay, I think that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for all your thumbs up, all your subscribing. I think it's down here. Subscribe down here, ring the bell after that, and you'll be notified when I go live. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a very, very Merry Christmas, wonderful holiday season, whatever you celebrate. And of course, a Happy New Year. So I will probably see you guys next year with brand new products. Okay, guys. Bye-bye.